Hi, this is Samir Bharti and we are here at Voice Summit in New Jersey and today we have with us Uday Akaraju, your CEO and founder of a company called Born AI. That's right. So first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to be here. So, uh, let's start with Born AI. Tell us a bit about what does the company do? So, Born.ai, we call it Born.ai. So, it's a artificial intelligence company, but we actually, it's a human-centered AI. So why do we call human-centered AI? That's what I'm going to talk about, but it's human-centered artificial intelligence for banks. We focus on financial institutions and banks to enhance the financial health of their consumers. That's what we focus on. Uh, how old is the company? So it started in 2016, uh, so it's 2019. So it, officially, we launched the platform actually last year in May. Mm -hmm. So we were in like prototype dev phase for the few first few years and we officially launched the platform last year in March. It, it, these days when you know in the world we're emerging tech, actually if you're a five-year-old company you are considered old company. <laughs> I know, that's right, yeah. So, so many of these technologies are so new. Yeah. So so what was the driving force that you started the company? <sighs> I don't know if I should share it but it's a sad story. <laughs> So I don't know, but because I mean, I, I'm a typical millennial, right? So I had a good paycheck a couple of years down the line. Maybe I was not wise enough. I was spending a lot of money and I actually went into a big financial trouble, big financial hole. So I had this big student debts, big mortgage, big car loan, everything sitting on top of my head. And I think that is, I think, the worst financial situation anybody can actually experience. So I was in some kind of situation. And you know what? I mean, if people say when you're in a situation, listen to your inner voice, that's not a good advice because you are, you'll be doomed because you listen to your inner voice, it's based on your, your own experiences, your own knowledge, which is limited. And that's something called confirmation bias, we call it in cognitive science. So that's not something. So I needed some advice more than what I had knowledge so that I can come out of that situation. I went to my bank, nobody helped. I went to my financial advisor, it didn't work. I started using 18 different apps right from Mint onwards. But six months down the line, I mean, nothing was adding up, nothing was working. And I was like, come on, what's really happening here? I mean, I have to do something. Then I went back to the drawing board and I actually designed a software for myself so that I can actually come out of the situation. What I really did, what I analyzed my transactions, kind of really empathized with myself. I mean, I was not looking at my future self, so I empathized with my future self. So I did a program 18 months down the line, I was completely out of it. I even had enough money to invest in this company. So that was the whole experience I went through. And I, I not only saw it me, but there are 81% of Americans today, even today, struggling with finances. So we are replicating this. We are actually helping banks so that they can help their consumers in, for enhancing their financial health. You mentioned, you know, empathy, you know, to empathize. Yeah. Um, and you share your own journey. Yeah. Uh, and uh, empathy is kind of becoming a buzzword in this space. Exactly. So, uh, how do you connect empathy? Okay, I do understand the, the personal experience, you know. Yeah. Uh, but how do you, you know, kind of connect empathy with voice and technology and where we are today? See, that's that's the thing, right? If you see all these research now, they say that empathy has declined forty percent in the last twenty years. People are actually not becoming empathetic. They're not being empathetic with them, with their future self or with anybody else. The thing that's happened, that's, I mean, they attribute that why it is happening is we are I mean, kind of addicted to technology. We are in, this, in our mobile devices. But the most important thing is we're having less conversations. Less conversations. We are built to be doing human to human conversations. Yes, technology is helping us great way, but we have to strike the right balance. For us, I think conversations is very important. But I mean, you can't say you stop using technology. Right? But you have to have conversations. How do you do it? So the future is definitely we're going to talk to more voice interfaces. That is going to be our future conversation. So if the old conversation taught us empathy, the new conversation also has to teach us. So that's how we are tying up. So the answer to actually the decline in empathy is how do we design the voice interfaces for the future? Yeah, I mean, people talk about voice. In, I mean, if you look at the old, you know, the most popular hell, you know. Yeah. You no, know, it, it was voice, you know. Yeah, it was exactly. Always, yeah. And it was not, he was not empathetic at all. Yeah, that's um, right. But here we're talking about a couple of different things, right? One is just, you know, the natural language, how you speak. Yes. That also should be empathetic, you know. Yes. You yes. cannot be, yeah. you know, just like Arnold Schwarzenegger's voice will not work. Yeah, it not work. Yeah. But at the same time, you also need an AI engine behind it. Correct that can actually use the, either the words or understand how Correct. to be empathetic. So it's not just the tone. It's not just so, the tone. so can you just explain, you know, about the work that you have done uh, with either the engine or, or the yeah. technology that you're using behind Correct. to be empathetic? Yeah, so it's called the empathy engine. 
that actually powers our conversations and also the artificial intelligence. So what it does is, like you said, it's not just the tone, right? But so what it does is three things. It actually thinks like you. So we take your financial data, we take kind of all your data, we, it, so that it kind of understands your persona. So we create a persona of you so that it understands you. But it has to think beyond you, right? So if it just underst understands your data, if it thinks like you, it's just you. So what it does, it, it also kind of, uh, we call it swarm intelligence. We, it collects data from all, I mean, different, different consumers, different personas. So what it does, it, it thinks like you. It also adapts to your conversation style. It speaks like you, but it kind of gives you insights which you couldn't think of. So that's a big part of the empathy engine. It is like you, it speaks like you, but it actually inspires you with what you couldn't think of. So. So is it also possible that one day you, the, the, the voice will be like the voice of your dad as long as you don't? <laughs> so to be, I, mean, I mean, just I'm, to make it, yeah. I mean, you can put the voice as your dad. I mean, when I look at all the science fiction movies, you yeah, know, they yeah. do try to, you know, to, yeah. you know, to kind of soothe you. Yeah. The voice that, because with us, you know, there are different voices that we hear, they kind of, you know. Yeah. So the, I'm going to the kind of futuristic realm, but since you are working in this field. Yeah. So when you're talking empathetic, you know, yeah. and, and, so it also, it's not just the, the tone. It's, it's not, not the tone. just, the, it's also no. about whose voice you hear, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whose voice it, I mean, see, we are taking the metaphor of your exactly. inner voice. Mm -hmm. It's instead of being your inner voice, it's an external voice, mm -hmm. which is like you, mm -hmm. but it is a much better version of you. Right. <laughs> so, especially when you're talking the financial organization or bank, yeah. like, uh, because those are the organization, you know, you, maybe you are, taking a loan to grow, build. I mean, a lot of emotions are attached. Exactly, it's a big decision. Like, Money is always, I mean, it's a fundamental thing which drives yes. your life. A lot of emotions driving it. Right. So that's what I say, I mean, finance, I mean, people always look to enhance their lives. They look for the right insight or like advice. And if they don't get it, they take a shortcut. Mm -hmm. And they end up somewhere which they really don't want to be. Mm -hmm. And banks or somebody have to, I mean, financial institutions have to help you. So they don't have any system. So we are actually giving that system so that they can understand this, be empathized with the consumers and kind of help them with their advice and give them the right insight. And banks are already big consumers of, you know, big data technologies and all because they Correct. are, yeah. know, they're one of the biggest, you know, consumers, Correct. right? You know what? Banks have the most rich data on the planet. Right. But they have the, they don't have any capacity. They're all old. I mean, they're legacy systems, we call it. But they are not using the data like mm -hmm. Amazon is using. Mm -hmm. Amazon just has your purchasing data. Right. But it says people who have bought this have also bought that. Amazon Just that's has it. much more that, than purchasing data. I mean, with Alexa, yeah, you know. But they are using purchase data right yes, now. Yes, right, right. But simple, I mean, using your purchase data, they're saying people who have bought this also bought that. That is driving 35% of the revenue. Mm -hmm. How, imagine what banks can really do if they add value exactly, in life. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So even when they are using big data, they are using in a legacy mode. It's a legacy no. mode and more for marketing. Right. Right. And they, they are pushing products. Somebody calls me as soon as I hit my 800 credit score, mm -hmm. I get my credit card offers. Right, right. That's not it. I mean, it has to be personalized. Right. We call it. You have to hyper personalize experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are still carrying the legacy credit card in our hands. <laughs> no, no country in the world is doing it. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, we are going cashless. I mean, the US but, is also going cashless, yeah. but. The most important thing today is customer experience. Right. I was in China and the, the way they do transactions yeah. is incredible. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so you are kind of helping them bring to this new realm. Uh, but we are here at the Voice Summit. Right. So first of all, what are you doing here? Yeah, as I told you, right? So there is this, uh, addict, I mean, kind of, we are having less conversations. So I told you, we are having more conversations. Whatever we share today, I'm sharing with my mobile phone mm -hmm. or all these technology platforms. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing as a human species, which actually identifies as a human, is empathy. That's declining only because we're not having conversations. Mm -hmm. If you see, there are also reports that the human intelligence is decreasing. <laughs> After 2000 especially, it's called the reverse Flynn effect, if you want to see. So the IQs are dropping. The reason why, again, they say, is we are having less conversations. So forget about, yeah, human to human conversations, but so I mean, that's what I'm telling. So the future, will undoubtedly be, we'll be talking with Alexa, series or something like that. So if the old conversation had taught us empathy, these things have to teach us empathy. Mm -hmm. And they have massive potential so that we can strike the right balance between these virtual social and structures and the physical social structures. Mm -hmm. So voice will be the bridge. Right. And that's why we are here. And how can we support any voice platform with our empathy engine? This is totally going off topic, okay. but uh, when you do talk about lowering, because I'm a science fiction writer as well. Okay. So one of my reasons that I think is because we are becoming so dependent 
Earlier, we used to remember the phone numbers of everybody. I know. Now, we, now, and we used to read books. To, now, yeah, I just, don't remember phone numbers now. Exactly. We <laughs> used to read books to get all the information. Now, we just Google it, yeah. get the snippet, and it's done. That's we are not it. reading the whole book to understand. Yeah. So yeah. that is also playing a big role. And it could be... You're absolutely spot on because, for example, my mother's 60th birthday is coming. What do I do? I don't think. I go to Amazon, let it think for me, right. and I buy the gift. Right. So that's what two things are affecting. Consistently, we are outsourcing our thinking to somebody else. And the second thing is we're not having enough conversation. So you have to strike the right balance. So when you were here, when you met, you know, I'm sure a lot of their partners, some competitors yeah. and some users. So what has been your experience so far had here at the event? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been great last two days because everybody is talking about personalization, personalization, which is absolutely spot on. And the second thing everybody is talking about is context, context, context. Yes, yes, it's very important, but you cannot achieve those two by just doing one dimension of your understanding the user. Purchase history doesn't, just transaction history doesn't. You have to understand the consumer as a whole. It's more holistic. How do you do that? That's what the empathy engine does. It tries to, so while having these conversations, we actually try to, we don't give a questionnaire, but we extract small snippets like what are your interests, what are your aspirations, what are your potential, so that tangible, there is something called tangible data, like all the data sits in the database, but there is something called intangible data which sits in our brains. How do you know that? The empathy engine has, gets that to the conversations and adds both of them so that you can add value to your life. Uh, so before we wrap this up, uh, we talked about a lot of technologies. What do you do in your free time? You know, <laughs> If you get any free time after founding this company and uh, trying to build it? So you know what, it's crazy, but I used to be a singer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is about voice. I haven't sung in like 12 years. So actually, while I was preparing my keynote, for voice, I was like, come on, I think I need to actually, the big difference today is Alexa, Siri, they can't sing as how humans sing, right? So I'm, I'm thinking in my free time, I should get back to singing, actually use my voice to inspire some people. That would be incredible. <laughs> that would be yeah. awesome. And they should have some live bands at I these know. events. Yeah, so they, they should they have. There's a voice summit. <laughs> yeah, I, I go to a lot of tech events and uh, Sousa, they have live events. They have their own engineers play the music. See, so that's, that's incredible. Yeah. Uh, so once again, with that, thanks for talking to me today. And I actually look forward to you know talking to you again to just see you know where the company is heading. Absolutely. It's a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for hosting. Thank you.